This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. You can't defeat fear just through self-determination. Let me make it clear that willpower alone is not enough to make you successful. We need God in everything we do. Faith is really the only antidote for fear. When fear knocks on your door, send faith to answer. Amen? Amen. Fear is how Satan gains access to our life, and faith is how God gains access to our life. There are over 7,000 promises in the Word, but not one of them will come true for you if you don't believe what they say. And don't think for one minute that Satan won't try to steal your faith. We have to fight the good fight of faith. There's only one acceptable attitude that a Christian can have toward fear, and it's this, I will not fear. Now, make sure that you understand what I'm saying. I didn't say you'll never feel fear. You will feel fear. But feeling fear and fearing are two different things. You see, you can feel fear and yet not be afraid. Because the word fear means to take flight or to run away from. It means to shrink back. And I just wonder how many people are here today or how many people who will watch this on television that you're not where you should be in life because Satan has held you back with fear. There's so many different kinds of fear that Satan uses. And we're going to discuss several different types of fear this morning. You can do it afraid. That means you can feel fear, you can feel afraid, but you can still go ahead and do what you believe God wants you to do. The Bible doesn't say shake not, sweat not, tremble not. It says fear not. And once again, that means to take flight or to run away from. I can't always do something about my feelings. But I can do something about what I do and what I don't do. Maybe I can't help it if I feel afraid. But I can make a choice to go forward anyway, no matter how I feel. Now, I want to say something, and I want you to listen and get this. If you can learn to get to the point where you will still do what's right, even when you feel wrong, you are going to be one victorious person. If the only time you do what's right is when you feel right, you're in real trouble. You know that? Uh, you know. What would you like to eat today, Joyce? Well, I'd like to have a big bowl of noodles. I don't know. <laughs> what would you like tomorrow? Tomorrow, more noodles. Lasagna, spaghetti, fettuccine. But I won't have that because I want to be able to get into my clothes. <laughs> Amen? We can't do everything we feel like doing and be the kind of person that we want to be. You have to be able to manage yourself. Proverbs talks about prudence. And probably a lot of you don't even know what that word means, but it means good management. It means that God has given us a lot of resources, and we have to, if you manage them well, then they'll grow and prosper. Now, you can't defeat fear just through self-determination. Let me make it clear that willpower alone is not enough to make you successful. We need God in everything we do. Amen? What would we do without the grace of God? And grace is undeserved favor, but it's more than that. It's the power of God the anointing of God, the presence of God. 
being with us to help us do with ease what we could never do on our own with any amount of struggle and effort. When you're gifted for something, if you trust God, it is not hard for you. I work hard, but what I do up here is not hard. It's easy because I'm gifted for it. But let me tell you, if I tried to lead worship, that would be hard. And you guys wouldn't like worship at all <laughs> if I did that. But years ago, I tried to learn how to play a guitar. I wanted to sing. I didn't want to just preach. I wanted to do it all. Aren't we like that? We want to do it all. We don't want to have to need anybody else. We want to do it all. Well, my fingers are too short to even really get around the neck of a guitar properly. Plus, I almost failed music. Matter of fact, it was funny. We had... Um, Martin Smith of when Delirious was together they used to lead worship for us a lot and he was with us one night and I made the statement that I came close to failing English and now my television program is on in two thirds of the world in 100 different languages 100 they're translated into 100 different languages. There was a Spanish man in a hotel one night. He worked there and he heard me come by and I said something in English and he said to one of the guys with us, oh, does she speak English too? Because <laughs> he, he heard me preaching in Spanish and thought that that was all I spoke. And... Uh, then Martin Smith said, I failed music. So here you had a preacher who almost failed English and a worship leader who did fail music. <laughs> it, it's hilarious. I mean, the people that God chooses, it's just downright ridiculous. And the Bible says that he chooses the weak and the foolish things of the world to confound the wise so that no person can have pretense for glorying and taking the credit unto themselves. That's why God is not even looking for people that are qualified. He's looking for people that are available. All you got to do is say, God, here I am. Use me. I'm yours. Do whatever you want to with me. And then... When God opens a door, walk through it. But you got to have that attitude, I will not fear. Romans 8, 31, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Wow. You know, we need to meditate on some of these scriptures more. How big is God? If God is for us, who can be against us? And God is for us. But maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's not that you, have a, you believe God can do anything, but maybe you're not sure he'll do it for you. See, you might even be sure he'll do it for me, but you're not sure he'll do it for you. Why? Because you think you don't deserve it. And you are absolutely right. And that's what makes it so beautiful. Is God is always giving us things that we don't deserve. All you really got to do is just love God. Repent when you make mistakes. And just don't give up. I think my greatest testimony in life is I'm still here. I just didn't quit, I didn't give up, I'm just still here. And I plan to be here until the day I die. People ask me all the time, are you gonna retire? What in the world would I do with myself if I retired? This is all I know how to do. And I don't have anything against it, so don't take this wrong, but I don't find retirement in the Bible. I find refirement. God will give you a fresh fire. 
But Caleb, when he was 80, asked God to give him a mountain. Some of you that are 15 wouldn't ask for a mountain. How do you feel about yourself? That's really the first thing that you got to get straight between you and God, is God loves you unconditionally. Paul prayed for the people that they would know the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of the love that God has for them. Why? Because perfect love casts out fear. You'll never get rid of fear unless you know that God loves you. Because the only reason that God ever gives in the Bible to not fear is because I am with you. That's all he ever says. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Well, what are you going to do, God? Whatever needs to be done. You're my baby. I love you. I'll take care of you. Just trust me. Satan's going to come in with fear and try to frighten you. But you say out loud, out of your mouth, I don't care how you try to make me feel, devil, I believe in God. Come on, speaking the word out of your mouth is one of the most powerful things that you can do. So how do you feel about yourself? I had to get that straightened out in my life because I didn't like myself. I didn't like my personality. I didn't like the way I looked. I didn't like my thighs. I, you know, you gotta make peace with yourself. And you need to stop comparing yourself with everybody else. God is never going to help you be somebody else. He will only help you be the best you that you can be. And you're never going to really receive the blessings that God wants to give you if you feel bad about yourself all the time. You say, but you just don't know what I've done. Whatever you've done, it's no worse than what the rest of us has done. Come on. Why don't you just decide to like yourself? Maybe you've believed too much of what everybody else has said and not enough of what God has said. My father told me the whole time I was growing up, you will never amount to anything. Well, ha ha, I had the last laugh. Amen. I remember all the friends I lost when I started preaching because I thought I'd lost my mind. And now a lot of them work for me. Come on, you'll have the last laugh if you stick with God. Did you hear me? Psalm 118.6, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I will not. I think when we, David says a lot, you know, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I think he was making a statement of faith. I don't think he was saying, I feel like it. I think he was saying, this is what I'm going to do. I will not give in to fear. Why? Because God is with me. God is on my side. How many of you experience fear in your lives and you're just tired of it, you don't want to live under that pressure? I grew up entrenched in fear. My father sexually abused me for about 15 years. I mean, we're talking, there wasn't a week that went by that I didn't have to submit to his craziness. And my mom knew about it, but she was afraid of him too, so she didn't do anything about it. To be honest, I had a harder time forgiving her than I did him because I can't, I still can't figure out what kind of mother lets her child be abused by her husband and doesn't do anything about it because of fear. But you got to forgive because God says to. But my father didn't control me physically. He didn't physically make me do anything. He controlled me with fear. Have you ever been controlled with fear? It's terrible. It's horrible. Fear has torment. So I grew up rooted in fear. That was all I knew. And so it took me a long time to trust. And it took me a long time to learn how to believe that good things would happen to me. I had had so many bad things happen that I got to the point where I expected them. You know, I was just kind of like always waiting to see what the next bad thing was going to be. Well, I've made a 180 degree turn, and now one of the things I say every day is something good is going to happen to me today. Come on. 
something good is going to happen to me today and something good is going to happen through me today. Don't just want good stuff for yourself. Want what God gives you to flow through you to other people. That's when you really get happy when you want to live to make other people happy. Let me say that again. That's when you really get happy when you live to make other people happy. Come on, put a smile on some faces today. Amen. I like you. You like, you're, you're good. At, I got a girl over here that's excited. I like people that get excited. Amen. I will not fear. I may feel fear, but I won't give in to it. Most of you are familiar with this story, but in Mark 4, 35 through chapter 5, verse 1, we see, starting in verse 35, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And then if you skipped all the way to chapter 5, verse 1, you would see they arrived on the other side. So when God says something, it happens. However, between verse 35 and chapter 5, verse 1, there is a hurricane proportion storm. Well, isn't that about the way it goes? God gives you a promise. You get excited. We think it's going to be easy. <laughs> I, remember when, I remember the morning when I was making my bed, and I was listening to the first teaching cassette I'd ever heard, and it was a message called Cross Over to the Other Side, taken out of these scriptures. And God spoke to my heart while I was making my bed and said, you are going to go all over the world and teach my word. Well, you know what? I believed him because when God speaks to you, he gives you the faith for something, and you can believe things that don't even make sense to your own mind. How many of you believe God has spoken some things to you that if you told other people, they'd think you were stark raving mad? That's why sometimes we're better off not to even tell anybody else, just wait and let them see. So we get excited, and I thought, I, I didn't know. I didn't know I was going to have to wait 30 years to see something happen. And I started teaching a Bible study that initially had 12 people in it, and I wasn't even smart enough to know that they all came because I was their boss at work. <laughs> I thought I had a real success. And then... You know, they went and complained to the union that they felt like that, you know, I was only giving favor to the people that would come to my Bible study. So the place I worked for, they told me I had to move the Bible study. Well, I lived 30 minutes away, 40 minutes away from where this Bible study was. And I thought, well, who's going who's to come all the way out to where I live to attend this thing? But I didn't give up. I was afraid nobody would come. I can't even tell you how many times in my life I've been afraid. I was afraid nobody would come, but you know what happened? It went from 12 people to 25. Let me tell you something. Inconvenience doesn't stop God. And neither do your inabilities. Two weeks ago, I saw something in this story here in Mark that it's amazing to me how you can read something. I mean, I've read this maybe a thousand times in 40 years, and I never saw this next sentence. Verse 1 says, that day when evening came, or verse 35, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. You know what the next line says? Leaving the crowd behind. Look, I'm going to see how smart you are. You know what? If you're going to do what God wants you to do, you probably won't be able to take your friends with you. Do you know how many people trade somebody that they want to keep a relationship with who doesn't care anything about them anyway for a relationship with God? It's pathetic. Leaving the crowd behind. 
I tell you what, I had to leave the crowd behind to be where I'm at. Some of you, the best favor you could do yourself is to get away from some of your friends. Because they're dragging you down. They're negative, they're critical, they, they don't encourage you in the things that you believe God wants you to do. <laughs> you say, well, I'm married to it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what? If you are, then pray and be so godly that that person will want to change. But in the meantime, just surround yourself. If you've got negativity at home, then go the extra mile to surround yourself with positivity during other times in your life. God will give you people to offset that if you need it. But I want to tell you something. Listen to me. If you want to be what God wants you to be, you are not going to be liked by everybody. Leaving the crowd behind. I love that. Wow. I taught a whole message on this recently. Leaving the crowd behind, they took along, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there were other boats too. And this, this big storm came up and the disciples got all afraid. And Jesus was having a nap in the boats. <laughs> Don't you love it when you're petrified and Jesus is having a nap? <laughs> well, God, don't you care about us? No, don't ever say that. Don't ever say, God, don't you love me? You always say, God, I know you love me. I don't care what's happening in my life. I know that you love me. I know you love me. That's the first thing that you need to get straight in your heart is that God loves you. And you know what? He will never love you any more than he does at this moment right now. You know why? He doesn't love you based on what you do or don't do. He loves you because he just can't help it. God is love. And he wants us to respond to that good news by loving him back. God's not for sale. You can't buy him with good works. The Bible tells us to do good works, and it even says we will be rewarded for our works. There are so many scriptures in the Bible that tells us to look forward to the rewards that we're going to have for the work that we've done. But we don't do them to get rewarded. Just like you really shouldn't give in the offering just to get more back. You should give because you appreciate what God's done for you, and you should give because you remember what it's like to be a miserable person, and you want to help other people that are where you used to be. And when we do things for the right reason, man, God comes through with blessings that are just absolutely almost unbelievable. In verse 40, he said, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? I see most of us would think, man, if I could just walk with Jesus. <laughs> if I could just be in a boat with Jesus. Oh, if I could have dinner with Jesus. Wasn't helping them. They were still just as afraid. Why don't you have any faith? But they arrived on the other side because what God says will happen will happen with or without you. Amen. God does not give us fear. When you feel fear, the first thing you need to know is, well, this isn't God. And say it out loud. This isn't God. Start talking out loud. This isn't God. This is 
For God did not give us a spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7. But he has given us a spirit of power. I love that word. Power, love. And a sound mind, but the Amplified Bible says a sound mind is a disciplined and a self-control mind. You know what that means? You can choose your own thoughts and you can think things that will benefit you. You don't have to think critical, judgmental, suspicious, nasty thoughts all day long. Amen? And you know what? The kind of thoughts you think could make you happy or sad. Who are you giving access to your life? You give the devil access through fear. And I can just hear somebody saying right now, I can't help it. I can't, I can't help it. I just feel afraid. Remember, we're not talking about how you feel. We're talking about what you do. You can even go ahead and say, God, God I feel afraid, but I'm not going to let that stop me because I know you're greater than any feeling that I have. It really doesn't matter how I feel. What matters is what I do. If you've been letting fear control your life, would you make a decision that you're gonna do whatever God wants you to do, even if you do have to do it afraid? That you are not gonna let fear rule your life, steal your life, and keep you from having the joy that Jesus died for you to have. Today, we're offering you Joyce's book, Do It Afraid. It'll help you recognize fear and understand how it works in your life. Confront those fears that are holding you back. Change your mindset for lasting freedom from some of the most common fears people face. We're also including this tote bag that'll remind you every day to do it afraid. Receive both items for your donation of $30 or more. Go to JoyceMeyer.org or call us at 1-800-727-9673. Let me give you a great example of how Project Girl works. You see, God's love, represented here, has totally changed my life. Now, all I need to do is share it with another woman or girl. Watch episodes of Enjoying Everyday Life, read daily devotionals, follow a Bible study plan here, 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 and here. The same great teaching from Joyce that you know and love now on the palm of your hand with the new Joyce Meyer Ministries app. Think of it as your daily dose of encouragement right here, right now. Search Joyce Meyer in your app store and download the new Joyce Meyer Ministries app today. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.